a wicked problem. What is a wicked problem? So, um, wicked problem has two words, huh? wicked and problem. You may use uh, the microphone. Even, yes. even though we use problem probably uh, a thousand times a day, um, if we think about what it actually means, uh, probably we have to think hard. But it's not that difficult. It is the discrepancy between an ideal or desired state and a factual state. And uh, wicked, uh, in English, evil or bad, um, is a problem that is actually very tricky and uh, highly resistant to resolution. The, uh, the term was actually coined by uh, colleagues in 1973 that uh, were in planning and design and was a reaction to a lot of social programs that failed in the 1960s due to a very technocratic uh, approach. And they came up with this uh, term, wicked problems, the opposite tame problems, to characterize problems that are um, highly contested. And if you go back to what a problem is, um, sort of a desired state is in social and political terms always contested. Huh? It's dependent on values. So uh, social problems um, and their solution of is dependent on the values of different um, actors that are taking part um, in the solution or creating the problem. And could you mention some examples of wicked problems which we have seen in the past? Well, the, uh, currently also in science, the most debated and also uh, um, researched problem is uh, global climate change. Mm -hmm. It's also called the super wicked problem because here we have uh, basically at least two factors that make it even more difficult. And that is that uh, there's enormous time pressure. So time is running out. Uh, usually social problems, if we have uh, poverty and inequality, um, are difficult to cope with, to solve, but there are, at least for mankind or species or the world, not irreversible damage uh, for the people themselves. It's uh, uh, highly problematic. But uh, uh, climate change, if uh, the science is right, and a lot, uh, we have a lot of evidence that it is right, that... Uh, well, we experience it today, ladies and gentlemen. We, uh, is right, yeah. we uh, are about to uh, inflict a major change on the, on the world's climate that is not reversible. So that is, uh, that is one example. Um, uh, other examples uh, are uh, um, defense and security, so uh, international terrorism, um, peacekeeping, uh, civil wars, uh, these kind of really big, uh, big issues. Wicked problems, yes. And if you uh, focus on your bachelor, how do you use wicked problems in your bachelor? We have uh, spoken to some students, of course, uh, but how do you use them in your lectures? Well, we have uh, basically the, the approach to wicked problems is that they are not solvable in the sense that we can eradicate them and then they are gone. Another example, for example, is uh, drugs, also quite virulent here in uh, Brabant. Uh, and uh, we have tried a lot of things to uh, um, try to solve it, but it turns out whenever we do something, there's something else that sort of happens, uh, if you look at Mexico, uh, basically a failing state, also due to the war on, on uh, drugs. So the, the approach we have in that program is first to familiarize students with the complexity uh, of the problems and also with the approach that um, coping, so controlling the uh, consequences is uh, sometimes better than actually trying to massively intervene creating all sorts of uh, uh, consequences or unintended consequences or even worsen the problem. So they, they are not learning how to solve the wicked problems, but they learn how to cope with the wicked problems. Yes, and especially also in the first step, huh, I said uh, uh, the desired state. Huh, and uh, this is also something while, because wicked problems become more and more prominent, uh, societies become more diverse. So the value divergence that already plays a role when we define what the problem is, is increasing. So what the students, not yeah, only in year two, but in year three, will get to that, uh, is the question, so how do you do, how do you deal with multi-actor constellations with their different interests, their different values, and how do you coordinate them? How can, can you come to a, uh, to a sort of, at least temporarily uh, a joint uh, definition of the problem and then move on to solution or coping? So, uh, for instance, the drug issue, the free um, distribution of heroin for drug addicts is one uh, solution for this wicked problem. Well, not a solution, but coping with... That's a very good example because uh, also uh, different societies have tried different things. Uh, and most of the time what you see is that the drug use doesn't go down, 
but you have all sorts of follow-up problems uh, with uh, uh, needle exchange, HIV, uh, 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 homelessness, uh, and with methadone or heroin, uh, people can function, can l uh, earn their livelihood. And you don't do away with the problem, uh, but you control or cope with the most uh, extreme uh, consequences. Okay. And today we will talk about the, the Volkswagen situation as the, as the wicked problem. If, if you should just pose one definition of the wicked problem in one sentence, what would, should we keep in mind for the rest of the program? How, how does the sentence go? Uh, wicked problems are problems that are highly resistant to a solution, tend to become chronic, and have to be uh, solved um, jointly. Jointly. Thank you very much, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Jörg Graap. Thank you.